Okay, thank you. And he'll pray for us after this. And for the food. Okay. One. First, we want to acknowledge that no leader worth his salt can ever forget or ignore the contribution that this city and this region have made to our national greatness and progress on all fronts. Two, we also want to acknowledge that in this region we do not imitate. We strive to be a model to others. Three, here we don't shy away from wars that matter. We were family in the first liberation war that gave us independence. We were family in the second liberation war that gave us multi-party democracy and restored our rights and freedoms and gave us a new constitution. Four, but we have fears now. And, this, and that is the reason we are gathering here today. Five, we fear that the window is closing on these rights and freedoms we fought for. Kenya Kwanza is clamping down on our gains. Six, elections are beginning to count for nothing. The suffering of the people now count for nothing. Parties other than the one in power are being made to count for nothing. Kenya Kwanza is taking us back to single party era of Mutukufu rice. Seven, we are here to stop Kenya from being a laboratory for bad election practices that other Africans borrow. We are here to free this country from electoral theft and the cars of elections whose results are predetermined. Eight, we are here to ring fence multi-party democracy and ensure it is reversible. We are here to end fear of illegitimate authority. Nine, we are here to ensure Kenya is governed by men and women who understand and subscribe to their deals of integrity and who are aware of the great trust and the great responsibilities required to run a nation. We are here to ensure Kenya is not governed by criminals and suspected criminals. Ten, we are here to ensure government works and cares for the people. We are here to ensure that when people say the cost of hunger, electricity and school fees is too high, the government will listen. Eleven, and we, and we are doing this for posterity. Twelve, we must free this country from electoral theft and the cars of elections, of course, whose results are predetermined. We must seek to be governed by men and women who understand and subscribe their deals of integrity. Fourteen, we know there is a vicious push for us to accept and move on. We know the IBC pronounced itself on the 2022 election. We also know the Supreme Court pronounced itself on that election. And so we are being told to accept and move on. But there is one more court to go. That is the court of history. 18. In some future date, not very far from today, the Supreme Court of History will sit in judgment on behalf of our children and grandchildren. 19. That court will ask each one of us gathered here today, why did you not stand up when things were being turned upside down in your own country to subjugate your own people? 20. That Supreme Court of History will ask us when the IBC, the Supreme Court, Parliament, and the government were being made helpless through bribery and intimidation. Why did you keep quiet? 21. 
that court of history will ask us, what happened to your courage? Why did you not resist when criminals were taking charge of your country? Why did you not speak out for your people when they could not afford food, school fees, medicine, and electricity? 22. That court of history will ask us, why did you not speak for your people when taxes weighed them down? What happened to your voice? What happened to your courage? 23. The court of history will ask us again, why did you not learn from the past and use it to inform the future of your nation? When they disregarded the people's vote, not once, not twice, not thrice, but many times, why did you let it keep happening? Why did you move on, knowing well that you did not accept or agree with what they were doing? 24. That court of history will ask us. I put it at your disposal. The men, women, and youth of integrity willing to stand with you and who looked up to you. People of principle who looked for no personal or financial gain. Why did you not guide them? To right the wrongs of the only country that God gave them. That court of history at number 25 will ask us, what happened to the ideals you held of serving the public good and the national interest? And finally, number 26, let each of us confront these questions now. And that is what we have chosen as the people to do in this gathering. Let's make votes count. Let's restore integrity in public service. Let us put the welfare of our people at the center of government. And let us do these things now. It is now or never. And those are the resolutions of the Pinyo Wachotu as we proceed to the, the people's uh, baraza at the Mui Sajam. Thank you very much. Uh, God bless. Bishop Abuka to come forward and pray.